Hello, my friends. Our topic is 47 vibration. What does 47 vibration mean? I've done some new research this month. I'm making this video towards the end of October 2023. Over the past several weeks, I've been going into great detail, analyzing the 47 vibration with this extreme case sampling research that we often do to figure out the meaning of fundamental things in astrology. The research that I've done over the past several weeks is a follow-up to the research done by Kenneth Asemi, and he presented that research in 2022 at the Vibrational Astrology Conference. This is a follow-up with a larger database that's in the Sirius 4.0 software, going over it again and again, and what we found, or I could say what I found, this research that I did, is what often happens in our research, which is the research by Kenneth found something very important, vitally important about 47 vibration. With the understanding of what he found and analyzing it again with more data, we see something underlying his observation. This is very common in our research. We find something consistent. We analyze it. Then we see some exceptions to the rule. Like, whoa, this person has huge 47 vibration, but I'm not seeing exactly what was found in the research. And you find there's something underneath that, underlying it. This is constantly going on. Recently, we've come up with new ideas on the meaning of 19 vibration. 10, 15 years after the original finding. Does this mean that the new insights replace the earlier insights? So far, that's never happened. What it's done is it's built upon it. It replaces it to the extent that we have a better interpretation, but it's not completely different. We're finding something more essential, more fundamental. And why 47 vibration? Because it's a prime number. The prime numbers are the building blocks. They have the essential meanings. If we can understand the prime numbers, we can build our understanding of all the numbers. As a quick example, 35 equals 5 times 7. What is the meaning of 35 vibration? It's a blending of 5 and 7. Exactly how 5 and 7 are blended together, we don't know intuitively. We can kind of get some rough ideas, but when we look at the charts, it becomes clear, and we already know what to look for, some kind of combination of 5 and 7. So, prime numbers are the building blocks, and here's what we found. We found that 47 has something to do with this diagram, okay? I'm just giving you an intuition. This is called, very often, a Venn diagram, V-E-N-N, -N, Venn diagram. And what a Venn diagram is showing, I think it's obvious, but just to go over it, it's showing some area of life called A, and then some other area called D, and do they have any relationship to each other? Could, for example, these could be two people. Person A and person D are very different. They only have a little bit in common. Person A and B have nothing in common. You get the idea. Person C has something in common with both person B and D. And this could more, this particular diagram would more accurately describe something like an organization or countries, a smaller country would be like C. A larger, very large country would be, for example, F. So you have a large country. How much does it have in common? You might look at it, say, economically. Say, suppose F is a large country with a certain kind of economy. Maybe it's a free enterprise system. Maybe it's more socialist. And you have a little country like G, and it has fairly fairly significant amount of overlap, mostly different. You get the idea. What 47 vibration has to do is with a specific interest in the way that different groups overlap. Now let's see what the specific interest is. The specific interest is different subcultures, different neighborhoods, different countries, different families, Every country, every neighborhood, every family, you can take it at any level, 
is going to have its own customs, its priorities, its interests, its motivations. Cultures are different. They're emphasizing different things. They're doing things in a different style, a different way. And what 47 vibration wants to do is it wants to preserve the identity of the groups. It does not want to like obliterate them. Take two groups. Suppose you have France and Germany. Doesn't want to obliterate France with its own integrity and Germany with its own integrity. It wants to really develop. It wants to bring out the best in those individual cultures and then see them work together. Either just coexist, and if they do overlap, to overlap nicely. So it's the Venn diagram, where each one of these ellip uh, elliptical shapes, these kind of circular shapes, represents a country, a culture, a way of life, and that way of life has its stories, it has its history. It has its progress, and it has all of the drama, all of the details, all of the things that are emotionally important to that group. What kind of dance, what kind of music, what kind of food, what kind of technology, what kind of style do they have for relating to each other? All of those things, all of those cultural aspects, all of those stories and narratives of the people's lives. What 47 Vibration wants to do is it wants to get the best of each one, it wants each one to grow and develop. And if they're separate, fine. For example, if these are countries, country B is separate from F. They get close to each other, you know, almost touching, but really pretty distinct. Whereas A and F, they're just completely different. They're even far away from each other. So there's no overlap. Fine, no problem. But if they do overlap, like C overlaps with both B and D, you want it to be constructive. You want it to be pro uh, productive. And you want each culture to respect and appreciate the other cultures. So every vibration has to do with some existential fact, some fact of life. The fact of life that 47 vibration is dealing with is that we have different groups. We have different neighborhoods. It's very obvious. We're aware of this, you know, from childhood. People speaking different languages, people having different lifestyles, people having their own stories, their own history. What 47 wants to do, again, is develop each one of those cultures. And if they intersect, if they overlap, if they come together, make it productive. That's all 47 wants to do. And in order to do that, it needs to experience different cultures, different ways of life, different stories, and then see how they interact and make it work as well as possible. So, let's read from the slide here. 47 Vibe is the way we work with the complex, interactive web of different subcultures, different neighborhoods, different countries, different families, whatever level you're looking at, at a neighborhood level, at a country level, whatever level, we have different ways of grouping of people sharing their lives. And in sharing our lives, we have entertainment, we have sports, we have technology, we have all kinds of things that we do, we share, and the people that have contributed to those different areas of life, the stories that develop. What 47 wants to do is for each of those subcultures, each of those groups, to maintain their integrity, does not want to merge them. Take France and Germany, does not want to merge them into one thing. France, they speak French, Germany, they speak German. They have a lot of similarities and they have some differences. Let's maximize that. Let's develop the unique potential of each one. And if they overlap, if they intersect, let's make them appreciate each other. 
not be suspicious, negative. If both of them are functioning well, they can appreciate and respect each other, share, and, and then maintain their own integrity, their own kinds of contributions that they can make to life. So 47 Vibe seeks ways to have these different groups retain their individual character and interact with each other in ways that respect, appreciate, and understand each other. 47 Vibe seeks ways for the complex web of different groups to coexist peacefully and be helpful to each other when circumstances arise where interaction between the groups is necessary. 47 Vibe has an innate sense that each group has its own unique contributions to make. This is the reality of 47 Vibe. Now, what did Kenneth find? What he found in his pioneering research about 47 Vibe is that it's about hidden stories. Well, wait a minute. We're going from hidden stories to the interaction of cultures. Well, hidden stories are inevitable. They are, virtually, they're always going to happen. Why? Let's read the second paragraph. Hidden stories are inevitable. There are so many different subcultures and so many associations, groups of people, and tightly knit groups within each subgroup that nobody is aware of all the cultural and social differences between the groups. Right? If you live in Paris, France, and your life is centered there, you're going to know less about Germany and vice versa. You know your culture. You live in it. You know the stories, you know the narratives. You don't know other narratives quite as well because you don't live in them on a regular basis. When the groups develop their own integrity, their own unique qualities, and then they interact, they're going to learn things, complex things. So you have hidden stories. You have stories that come to the surface that maybe a few people know about and most people don't. So what 47 Vibe is working with is not something simple, not something easily defined. It's dealing with all of the complexities of an entire lifestyle. And in relating them to each other and relating the what's essential and important and exciting, you could say, about each culture, it's discovering and uncovering things as well. So I think what's going on with 47 Vibe is it's not hidden stories exactly, but hidden stories become part of what 47 Vibe deals with. Because 47 Vibe focuses on the whole fabric of the culture. It's not extracting one or two things out of the culture. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's looking at this, you might say, more holistically, more organically, the whole process of what's going on. And in order to do that, 47 Vibe gets interested in the historical roots. It gets interested in the deeper levels of what's driving things. Why is this happening? Why is this important? bringing out the best in each culture and then having them relate to each other. So 45 Vibe is interested in the conscious, <clears throat> excuse me, the conscious as well as the unconscious motivating forces, historical, psychological forces that are at work, as well as any other factors that drive the development of these subcultures and their interaction with each other are important to 17 Vibe. So again, it's this Venn diagram. And think of all the complexity in each one of these. And 47 Vibe is bringing out the best of each one of these, hoping to bring out the best, and then bring out positive interactions which respect and appreciate the integrity of each one, and then each culture maintaining its own identity at the same time. So the intersection and interaction of multiple stories, again, 47 Vibe is looking at the whole complex fabric of a culture 
and all those storylines. How different groups with their own stories interact with each other. How our individual lives affect each other's lives. And 47 Vibes is interested in how to create diverse lifestyles and stories that facilitate one another rather than conflict with one another. So 47 Vibe is pro-diversity. Pro-diversity especially in encouraging each group to form its own club, its own tribe, its own family. So it likes to see neighborhoods with different styles. It likes that. It doesn't want everyone to be like everyone else. It likes the idea of a natural integrated system of people working together and other systems working together. Different neighborhoods that are a little bit different, sometimes very different from each other. So 47 Vibe is interested in the formation of subgroups and subcultures and their interaction with each other, enabling each subgroup to have its own story and purpose. How we create healthy communities and nations that are healthy systems where people develop the lifestyle and the life story that's best for them while interacting effectively and in a supportive way with everyone else. This is what 47 Vibe wants to do. It wants to see these different subgroups, support them, improve them, develop them, and have them interact with each other in constructive ways. And 47 Vibe is also interested in how we create the stories, the stories that we experience in our lives, and how we choose the path that we are on, how we play a part in life and the decisions and circumstances that lead us to it. So 47 Vibe is very interested in the stories within each group and how these groups might interact. How we can help people to choose an interesting or productive path in life. And how we can evaluate the decisions that are made and correct any mistakes. The details of this are often hidden or undiscovered, but they do not need to be hidden. So 47 Vibe is looking at a neighborhood, a country, seeing what it's doing. Is that productive? What decisions are being made? Let's evaluate what's going on, let's improve any problems that we see. So what do people with strong 47 vibration do? What kinds of areas would they go into? Social science, social engineering, empowering different groups within a country or region of the world, supporting diversity and mutual benefit from diversity. That's a big one. Uh, mutual benefit from diversity. This is a key thing for 47 Vibe because 47 Vibe is seeing the importance and power of having subgroups with their own specializations. So you want that diversity, a diversity of different neighborhoods, of different lifestyles. It makes life richer and it makes life better from the 47 Vibration point of view. Improving opportunities for different groups so that they can contribute and perform useful and healthy roles in society that are complementary or synergistic with, with other groups. 47 Vibe wants to develop the highest potential of each group. So it's looking for ways to improve each group and improve their communication with each other. So social science, social engineering, politics, political theories, uh, being a member of various kinds of communities. Uh, it can also be things like judges. What does a judge do? A judge is dealing very often with people who have different life stories that are interacting with each other. So people that are marginalized or not fitting in. You're going to commit a crime because something is not working for you. And what's not working often has a large social context to it, depending on the opportunities, the systems that are in place, and what's available for you has a lot to do with these things. And what the judge is doing, or some, it, it, the judge is evaluating the circumstances and the situation that involves this interaction of different people. Very often, 
with a different lifestyle, a different background, a different history. Okay, stories, plays, or movies about the way that people's lives, uh, how people's lives function in different social circumstances, how different demographic groups or subcultures interact and change the course of each other's lives, how these different groups affect each other when they are not aware of it or do not expect it to, to directly influence each other. So 37 Vibration is going to experience different cultures, get involved with them, see how they interact with each other, and see how they influence each other. Writers, therefore, writers, producers, directors, sometimes actors, people who are involved in telling the story of someone's life and how that story relates to the subgroup that they're in and how that subgroup relates to other subgroups. So here are the top four people. I took the top four uh, using the, the newer, larger database that we have just more recently. We have a fellow named Merrill Connolly. He's an American actor, uh, an administrative judge, and a rancher. So at various times in his life, he was acting or was a judge or a rancher. He was a team leader and was involved in filming the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So here we see acting and being a judge, two kinds of behavior that we associate with 47 Vibe sometimes. If the acting puts a, a contrast between people in different social strata and social, different social groups, then that particular movie or play or whatever it is has a strong 47 Vibe theme. Not all movies do have a strong 47 theme. So it'll be an actor who's involved with the interfacing of people in different cultures and the problems that arise, the potential good things that can happen from the interaction of these subgroups. We'll talk more about this. Uh, we're going to go through each person in details, but let me just summarize for now. The second person, second highest strong, is a fellow named Matteo Renzi. He was the Prime Minister of Italy. So we're seeing politics. Politics um, and being involved with people in, in, a, in a close way, these are things that often involve 47 vibe. Another person, the third strongest person in the database, so these are really extremely strong 47 vibes, strongest of many thousands of people, it is a fellow named Didier Machain. He's a French politician who's active in the Socialist Party. And then lastly, um, Percy Gibson. Uh, now, Percy, one thing he's known for is that he married the famous actress Joan Collins. And Joan Collins is 30, happens to be 32 years younger than him. So I wasn't able to get a, tons of information, as much information about Percy Gibson as I did for the other three. But we did get some very good information. Um, about him. So we have enough to evaluate at least some of his life. So to summarize, of our top four strongest 47 by people in the database, two of them are politicians. Two that were actors and either, the two that were involved in, uh, in what's called movies or print, you know, those kind of, um, uh, artistic uh, displays. So two politicians, two that were actors, and either filming movies or producing them. So we have acting, producing, directing going on. This is another thing 47.5 does. One of the actors was also in a political position as an administrative judge. So that's Merrill Connolly. He was both in film and um, in politics as a judge. Okay, so there is a great consistency in the professions and these people, and it is consi consistent with our understanding of 47 vibe. Now, let me give you a little background theory um, about 47. We do a modulus 30 to determine the meaning of prime numbers above 30. So, for example, 47, the vibration that we're 
researching and presenting here in this video. If we do a mod 30, that just means you divide by 30 and take the remainder is 17. You can also go down by 6. 30 minus 6 is 24. 24 minus 6 is 18. Those also tell us something. The highest one, uh, based on, on the largest number, in this case 47 mod three, 30, gives us 17. Now we could do 47 mod 36 or 42. Those are multiple. We're adding multiples of uh, 6. But generally, um, you know, we, we just focus on uh, mostly the highest one. Here it's 47 mod, mod 30 is 17. And there's a subtone. We go down to 24 and we get a 23. It, what I wanted to say there is that it's multiples of 30 that are the most fundamental. 30, 60, 90, 120, etc. They set the strongest tone. And that is 17 for the 47 vibration. Now, we're going to go through each person. I'm now at 26 minutes. I like to go for about a half hour. So I'm going to end here. We'll continue with part two. In part two, we're going to look at the charts of these four people, these super 47 vibes, and we'll see how the 47 vibe is operating in their lives. And we will be looking at a few other charts as well uh, to illustrate some of the ways in which 47 vibe works. Okay, I'll see you in part two, and we'll start off looking at this fellow Merrill Connolly, and we'll see this gigantic, massive 47 vibe chart that he has, the largest and most powerful in, I think, it's about 80,000 charts, huge number of charts. So let's see what's going on with his 47 vibe. Okay, my friends, thank you for watching, and I'll... Hope to see you in part two. God bless. Namaste.